So redox reactions. This is actually reduction oxidation reaction. They always come together. Just to a quick remind, if you lost electrons, you undergo oxidation, you can serve as reducing agent, which the things always happen in the anode if you have a electrochemical cell. Okay, so LORA means actually the oxidation reaction. GROC means actually the reduction reaction, just a refresh of your memory. So we're going to use LORA and GROC here too. Assuming today you see this reaction, okay, A plus B, they give you A plus and uh, B minus. You want to identify who is actually LORA, who is actually GROC. In order to make those judgment, the first thing you do is actually you write out the oxidation number of the species. What is the oxidation number of A? Zero, right? How about B? Good. How about A plus? Plus one. B minus. Negative one. You know A goes from A become A plus, right? So the oxidation number goes from zero to one. So it's undergo a oxidation. Therefore, this is actually your lower. It lost electrons that oxidize and serve as reducing agent. And this reaction will always happen at the anode. Okay, so let's see your LORA. A is undergo LORA, right? That means actually your B is going to be your G rock. So you gain electrons, right? That's why you go from one to negative one. You undergo a reduction reaction. So once you can see these things, you can start to break down your chemical equation to so called the half reaction. So this is actually a very important step that you need to do it by yourself. So you need to know that, okay, the A is going to become A plus and it's going to lose electron, right? And then your B is actually gain electrons, therefore it becomes B minus. So later on when we do these balancing equations, this will become a critically important step that you need to get mastered. But before we do that, okay, I want to actually give you some more practice here so that you can actually identify who is undergo LORA, who is undergo GROC. So let's look at this. Two potassium plus chlorine become two KCl. What is the oxidation number of this? Zero, right? Because it's at its natural existing states. How about Cl2? Zero, okay. How about this? KCl. KCl overall is zero, right? But right now you want to actually start to break down the things to see the oxidation number of each individual atoms now. So remember, potassium, okay, if you look at the periodic table, it's what? 1A group. If you see a compound, you have a 1A group. It's always plus one, always. And then, because overall it's neutral, it's zero, right? Let me say your chloride has to be negative one. So now, if you just write down the oxidation number of your potassium, you can see it go from zero to plus one. And if you do the same thing for your chloride, it goes from zero to negative one. Okay, so who is Laura? Potassium, right? So you see the increase of oxidation number. Let me say actually you undergo oxidation, right? So you lost electrons. That's actually your LORA. And then chloride will be your G rock. So let's first example. Let's look at another example. Okay, this looks actually quite complicated, right? How should you see this? Okay, you want to see how many different atoms you have here. So what other atoms you, you have seen here? You have carbon, you have hydrogen, you have oxygen, right? You actually only have three types, different atoms. Then you actually want to know 
before and after reaction, how the oxidation number of these atoms changes. So from there, they can, you can figure out who is actually your Laura, who is actually your Jira. Neutral species, right? CH4. And here you should use the rule that the proton, the H always carries positive one. So you know here your H is positive one. That means your C will be negative four. You need to do this calculation very fast now. So you know your C is negative four, H is actually positive one. How about this? What's the oxidation number of your O? Zero, right? How about your CO2? So it's a compound, right? It's, a, it's not just O2, okay? It's CO2. Let me see your C is going to carry negative two. How about your C? Positive four, right? Okay, move on to the next one. O will be negative two, H will be positive one. Okay, let's look, let's analyze the oxidation numbers before and after reaction. Let's look at C. Original your C is negative. What is the oxidation number after the reaction? Positive four, right? So it lost a lot of electrons, right? The oxidation number goes up from negative four to positive four, right? Therefore, you know it's undergo a oxidation reaction, right? And that's actually your Laura. Now let's look at your proton. Before reaction, what is the oxidation number of your H? Plus one, right? How about after reaction? It's plus one too, right? So what does this tell you? It did not actually undergo any redox reaction. This is actually not going any redox reaction. How about your oxygen? Before reaction, it is what? Zero, right? How about after reaction? Negative two, right? So it's actually gaining electron, right? So it's actually your G rock. Let's look at another example. First step is actually figure out how many different of atoms you have. Here you're going to have silicon, chloride, hydrogen, and oxygen. So those are the four different atoms you are going to have. So then we need to actually figure out the oxidation number of each atoms now. Cl in a compound always carries negative one, right? How about your silicon, Si? Plus four, good, okay. H2O, you know the O is always negative two. H is always positive one. HCl, H will be plus one, Cl will be minus one. SiO2, you know your O is negative two, right? Your Si will be plus four. Let's start from silicon. Before reaction is plus four, right? After reaction, still plus four. Right? So it's not your Laura, it's not your Jira. How about your CL? CL go from negative one to still negative one, right? So it's not. How about your H? Plus one to still plus one, right? So it is not redox reaction, right? How about your oxygen? Minus two to minus two. It's not, right? So what does this tell you is actually that by analyzing your oxidation number, you realize this is not a redox reaction. So this is how you actually differentiate whether you have redox reaction or not. If you have a redox reaction, you must have your LoRa. You must have your G-Rock.